<clears throat> so, hello, here we are in France on the river Loire. River Loire. And um, we met something like six years ago. And uh, when, I, when I was sort of uh, trying to create this um, newspaper that is on the webpage bsrrw.org, downloadable, I was looking for the best experts in the world. That was six years ago, more than that. And I found you. Well, you On have radiation, to, yeah. Have to take the second burst there. So this is Milieu magazine. It's Swedish environmental magazine. And uh, <clears throat> then we were uh, trying to get a grip over the situation of nuclear pollution of the Baltic Sea region. And on European Social Forum in Malmö, you had a presentation on this issue. And uh, I find it right now when uh, we are in, in the trouble of getting next world war, very important just to look back on what we were discussing then, six years ago, which was this issue about Euratom Treaty that actually lies as the base of the whole European Union and also Lisbon Treaty. And uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to have your take on this issue. Right. Well, after the Second World War, control of power in, in the world, global, global power, came to be exercised th through the uh, acquisition of atomic weapons. What is acquisition? Acquisition is like the getting hold of. You know? So the people who had atomic bombs were the people who, who became the new masters of the world. Prior to, to the Second World War, the masters of the world were the people who controlled the seas. And that was basically Great Britain. So if you look at a map in 1950, or before the Second World War, and, and, and they were coloured differently, so all of the atlas had, had different colours, and you look for the, the colour of the, the Great Britain, as it then was, was pink. And most of the globe was pink. Um, but of course, after the Second World War, it was not control of the seas anymore that was important. It was the ownership and development of these appalling weapons of mass destruction, nuclear bombs. And this, was bas this basically meant the United States. <coughs> the, but the question of the uh, material necessary to make the bombs was the most important one. And this material is uranium. So most of the ura uranium, in fact, in the world uh, is in Africa and in Australia, although at that time it wasn't really, it wasn't really used very much, it wasn't mined. It was in the early days when they wanted to get uranium. It came from the Belgian Congo. And so when it became important to develop nuclear weapons and to have access or have the ownership of the uranium, it was necessary to create uh, organizations that controlled the ownership of uranium, because obviously if uranium can make bombs and anybody can get hold of uranium, you've got somebody who can make bombs and you don't want that, you want to control it. So the, the Euratom Treaty, I think, although you know, there, may have been, there may have been all sorts of superficial explanations as to why it was there, arose out of the atoms for peace idea put forward by President Eisenhower after the bombing of Hiroshima. So the, 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 the world felt, felt very bad about the bombing of Hiroshima because there were all these pictures of people and there was all this talk about cancer and birth defects and so forth. And there had to be some sort of way in which they could continue to make bombs and create plutonium and so on um, and to fool the public into thinking that this was all something that was good for them, energy too cheap to be metered. So all of these organizations, and particularly the Euratom organization, <coughs> 
arose out of this need to control the supply of uranium. <coughs> and that's where Euratom came in. And then, of course, Euratom, as you say, in fact, became a controlling entity in the development of the European Union, because the European Parliament itself is a subsection of the Euratom Treaty, as I know very well, because it, when it came to dealing with the Euratom Basic Safety Standards Directive of 1996, it became clear that the European Parliament couldn't change any of the, of, of the um, provisions of the Basic Safety Standards Directive. And this Basic Safety Standards Directive is the one that, that, that promulgates the ICRP risk model, the one that says all of the radiation that gets tipped into the Loire, for example, by all the nuclear power stations, has no effect because the doses are too low. Yeah. And this is central. Here I will put uh, this quote from the Euratom Treaty that actually is officially superior to the European Union itself. As under Article 3, of the new for Lisbon Treaty revised version of Euratom Treaty states it says following the tasks entrusted to the Euratom community shall be carried out by the following institutions a Euro European Parliament a Council a Commission a Court of Justice a Court of Auditors each institution shall act within the limits of the power conferred upon it of this Euratom Treaty. In other words, all these institutions of European Union have the task to promote, support and favour nuclear power above other energy types. And the European Union was created for this task. But it's not but it's but it but the, the European Parliament and the and the control of the of the legal system inside it is is a farce. It's it's a it's a it's a it's theatre. Because recently, you and I, we made a we made a, 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 a petition, and there are provisions inside all of these legal structures for the petition to the European Parliament to to be um, something which they have to do something about. So we this is on nuclearjustice.org. Yeah, nuclearjustice.org. Right. Yeah. And what this petition, that was petition a couple of years ago now. what this petition <laughs> did was it drew attention to the fact that there were enormous amount of published. Um, proofs that this basic safety standards directive for radiation were wrong, was wrong for internal exposures. Uh, these proofs are, are from all over the place and you can look on the websites to see what these proofs are. And so this went to the European Parliament Petitions Committee and it just was disappeared. It went straight down the black hole and nobody did anything about it, even though the provisions of the basic safety standards directive have a clause in them saying that if any new evidence appears, the whole thing has to be revised. Nothing has been done, nothing has been revised. And why? Because of course the European Parliament has absolutely no power, because it's, it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the Euratom Treaty people that have the power. So what are these people? So in this newspaper that you can download from bsrrw.org, you can still read that Euratom was founded in 1957 by coal and steel union. Okay, what what is that? Well, if you believe that is that, Belgium, believe Germany, France, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Italy, and Netherlands. Those countries. That. Con what can you say about those countries? What you can say about those countries is that only Belgium and France has access to, <coughs> to, to uranium and uh, on, on site, if you like, and in the colonies. And so if this is about the control of uranium, then the subtext of all of this is that Fr France is going to produce nuclear weapons, and in fact it did. France is, the, is, is an independent nuclear nation. It is not dependent... Yeah, that's a very romantic way to put it. I believe that that's the case. I believe that the French have always put two fingers up to the United States, and that's why I like it here. Nevertheless, they are the biggest uh, polluters. Well, of course, yes. Well, they, 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 and the biggest war man was as they, well. They, they swallowed this business that... They swallowed this idea that the, that the low doses that are released from these power stations ha, have, no, have no effect. I mean, I can say that they do have an effect, but France has no cancer registry, see? So there's no way of telling. So how can you like them? I don't understand this, really. This is like mass murder on, on a huge nation scale, without being even sort of uh, having statistics over it. I agree with you.
Nobody's perfect. <laughs> so we are being very ironical about it, but uh, generally, uh, this Euratom Treaty, it, by the way, it has been renamed into EAEC Treaty, just to cover up for all these schemes. But, uh, <clears throat> and this is written six years ago. So, uh, maybe you have better updates on what's going on right now. But one is for sure that these coal and steel union nations, Belgium, Germany, France, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Italy and Netherlands, they are in the big plan now against Russia in many ways. And uh, Europe was supposed to be the peace arrangement, this union. But actually it's not, if your atom is the base of it, and only some uh, corporations are uh, taking and making business on project of nuclear, then we, we have no chance for peace. That's why we need a shift, systemic shift, which has to provide real money to every nation and real power to native people of each nation. And this, uh, this corporation-driven madness has to be seized out peacefully, lovingly. And uh, these people who really don't understand what bad things they're doing should go on vacation. It's very important to give them vacation. They, they can't be in, in charge of jobs. Okay? Only loving people who know ecological ways of our Mother Earth can be in charge. And the parliaments of each nation definitely should uh, create systems where responsible people and loving people are in charge. And that can't be done through party system because parties as such are created to create irresponsibility because a party is not a responsible system. There's always, oh God, these or those parties have done this, but there, there is no responsibility in it. So we have to go back to the individual responsibilities and then the parliaments have to fix that there are individual responsibilities and elections that are responsible. This is getting a bit political for me. It is not political at all, it's scientific. I don't think so. Uh, because uh, politics is exactly what has made it all into a mess. But scientifically it can be all uh, redistributed very well. So Europe has the biggest concentration of nuclear power plants in the world. Hundred forty two power plants. Well, they're mainly here. M most of them are in France, yeah. How many are in France? Too many. Anyway, I think they're gonna have to give up using them because the problem is that, that with with the droughts that there are now as a result of global warming, we're getting um, in a, and also the heat. It's turning, turning out that these, these French power stations that are mostly built on rivers uh, are, are have to keep shutting down because they can't cool themselves because they take too much water from the river and the river temperature goes up and so forth, so they have to shut down. So I think the French are, are rapidly rethinking their whole economy and their whole reliance on, on nuclear. I think that is happening. And if I recall right, rightly, then in the Euratom Treaty it says that what all the uranium that is in the ground belongs to your atom. Mm. And it, this is very interesting because, for example, in Finland, foreign companies, Areva Resources, Namura... No, Areva is French. Foreign company for Finland. Yeah, Namura Corporal Minerals, Mawson Resources, Belvedere Resources are eager to, start, uh, to do uranium mining, yeah? And uh, so it is in Sweden. They are sort of, um, and many other countries, yeah? So, so this Euratom has created that nations have no power over their own uh, uranium. 
The nations have no power over anything anymore. It's all, it's all, it's all a question of, of multinational corporations and their power. That's how it all works. So even whatever you think about nations, nations don't have any power. As a result of the expansion of, of uh, Federal Reserve money and plastic money, non-existent money if you like, nations don't have, the actual nations don't have enough money in their coffers to do anything at all. They're, they, jump, they jump to the tune of the powerful companies that, that control the, the whole of the global economic system. Yeah. And key to all of this is energy, of course. So key to all of it is energy. And energy comes from the production of nuclear electricity. And this trap we got into through this... And the control... <coughs> Lisbon Treaty, too. And the control of oil. So all of the... I, mean, I was thinking that last night, that it all comes back to energy, really. But, uh, but the first of all... The people energy control the power. Yeah. But, but also, how did we get on this trap of Lisbon Treaty? Through the military. 486 million people in Europe have been denied the right to have referendum over Lisbon Treaty. And Lisbon strategies are sort of invoked everywhere against their will. We're rambling now, babe. We should, we should sort of like stick to the, to the, to the thing. You know, the oh, thing. I am sticking to the thing. So, so what is very important here is that you people in your local governments go and get these issues forward and with your local networks put statements that you will not accept this current system that has disempowered you and that a power system where local people decide the matter of things and the systems in place of power has to be designed and put into place. You can do it. And we are here to support you. The way to do it is simple. You just stop buying things, bring the government down in a month. Uh, <laughs> that's very, uh, very utopian in my understanding. That'll work. That'll work. The whole thing, the whole system works on buying things. And most of the things you buy are just what you know, you don't need. So all you have to do is just stop buying things you don't need, and that's the end of the government. Then you decide you want to do I don't believe in that, anyway. What I believe in is, you can see on the webpage nationalstate.info, nationalstate.info. And that's why I have created this Baltic Sun model, which is a scientific concept with all the value protection parameters. Parameters of value that have to be protected by every nation. And you can add to them and make it better and stronger and make your own parameters, but all of them we can protect. We just have to monitor them and put the, put the protection systems into place. And so stay in touch and uh, there is this uh, Latvian society that we created in Latvia where we have peace, peace commission and uh, we will do whatever we can to keep peace and create a more stable peace <laughs> on our planet, won't we? Yeah. And that Latvian society has a homepage labia.lv L-A-B-I-E dot L-V so, And you can create your own societies where you live and protect the local people and empower yourselves. Any concluding words? Thank you. <laughs> so, dear France, you really need to make your country back to ecology so that the river, the mother river Loire that we are on can be proud of its coasts that are not destroyed by these nuclear power plants that will have all these contaminations for 45 Actually, billion years forward. Actually, let me tell forward. you a story about this while, uh, while, we're, while we're here nashering away and it's getting cold, but just quickly, because I probably won't tell it otherwise, is that just down the river from here, about 30 miles, is a, is a power station called Belleville. 
And close by, I, I mean, I was on my boat there some years ago, there's a little town called Siri Prelere, which has got a cemetery. Anyway, <coughs> I, I was just walking around the village, had a look through the cemetery, and started to check out the ages of the people who died. Now, the French Catholics, certainly in this area, and if you die, you go into the cemetery mostly. So in any case, so this is, this is a, 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 as an epidemiologist, which is what I am as well, um, you can look at the, all of the gravestones in the cemetery and you can assume that this is a sample of dead people out of a population of dead people. So statistically, if you have enough pe people there in your sample, you can draw some conclusions about what's happening. And the extraordinary thing is that the people who were dying in that cemetery after the building of the Belleville nuclear power station were all too young. So I actually copied them all down and made a little Excel file and did some studies. And I'm not going to publish it because I don't want to freak everybody out too much. But just what you I don't did, have all time to do everything. What, what I did notice so is you that, get in and do it. Is that, is that, that what, study. You, what you can do is since there are no since there are no national statistics on cancer in this country, what you can do is you can do your own study. You can go, if you live near a nuclear power station in France, you can go to the downwind village and look through the cemetery and just check out how many dead people there are who are young compared to how many dead people there are old and compare that to the national statistics for the age distribution of death, dead people. So in other words, normally what happens in, with, with death is you get an S-shaped curve. Very few people die, and then as they start to get to the age of 45, 55, 65, you get a slow increase, and then they all die more and more, and then there's nobody left. That's and this conversation case. goes about the Busby Institute that needs to be no, no. created. Anyway. So you young people <coughs> so can learn how to do these epidemiological studies. They are not hard to do at no, all. No, they're not hard to do. But the problem is that the people who work as epidemiologists always work for the government, so they're not allowed to do this. And in fact, in Sweden recently, there was a guy, Martin Tondell, who did a study of cancer after Chernobyl in northern Sweden, and he lost his job, and he, he was made to retract, and everybody attacked him, and so forth. So it's, you know, don't think you're going to get rich and famous doing this sort of epidemiology, but it's very important. But so, you will preserve <coughs> the living systems on Earth. Anyway, but the other thing, but the other thing is one destroying. more thing about this. One more thing about this. These big stacks from Belleville produce an enormous amount of fallout. So all the steam comes out of the stacks, and presumably also in the steam is a certain amount of radiation. So I was on the canal, and then it rained. Um, yeah. And uh, I have a Geiger counter on the boat in case there's another world war, a nuclear war. Um, I have a Geiger counter wherever I go. In fact because I've been worried about nuclear war since the 1960s, um, which is what brought me into all of this. Anyway, so I've got this Geiger counter, and then it rains, and on the deck of my boat, I've got this little flower garden with these little pansies and petunias, which are like little it flowers. It's a very nice They've garden. Got lovely little, beautiful, beautiful colored um, flowers, purples and pinks and reds and so forth. Anyway, so it rained on these things. And, of course, and I checked the Geiger count of rain, and it was quite radioactive. It was about twice the background level, of, you know, so there was something in there. But the main thing about it is it killed all the flowers. The next morning they had all dissolved, all the colours had changed, yeah, of and they just like disappeared. They just, you could see like little bits of slime where they had been. And what, that's what poor French have to breathe. And so that's why the people in this little village near Belleville have rather too many young people in there cemetery. So there we are. And but, uh, uh, so, little, little story. Thank you so much for being with us. And um, here is a picture. <coughs> and we're going to go now because going otherwise on. we're going to go now because otherwise I'm going to freeze to death because it's cold. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is what's going on. This is that coal union, huh? Coal and steel union. I don't think it's anything to do with the coal and steel planet. union. The coal and steel union is just some, some sort of story that they made up. This is all about nuclear weapon, nuclear weapons. That's what it's about. The control of uranium for nuclear weapons. Okay. Bye.